it's Roger Bisby here from Skill Builder and I've got another test for you. This time we're looking at Bosch. We're looking at a big SPS cordless hammer drill. There's never enough room on this bench. So the Bosch GBS cordless 36 volt, which is a hell of a lot. That's a lot of power in there. 36 volt hammer drill. Bosch are pretty good at hammer drills. I've got to say that all power tool manufacturers excel at some particular area. And for Bosch, one of their big strengths is in their hammers. So this 36 volt drill comes in a couple of different formations. You can actually get it in a compact formation for drilling up to 18 millimeters in masonry, or this one, which is a more powerful model. It's got a deeper section, basically a bigger motor, and this will drill up to 28 millimeters in masonry. So it's a big old fixing drill. Also, it's got a rotary stop on it. So if you select the rotary stop, you can use it for chipping and hammering and things like that. It's not made for breaking up concrete, it's made for chipping off tiles, chipping off render, that kind of thing. If you need something to break up concrete, then you need to go for a bigger Bosch hammer. Then there are plenty of those 10 kilo hammers and all sorts to choose from. But it's a good idea not to overstretch your tool. In other words, you buy a tool like this, you pay money for it, and the last thing you want to do is wreck it using it for inappropriate jobs. That said, it'll do a surprising amount. I've taken it out already onto site and used it so I've got some idea of what it's capable of and what it's actually got on the back here because it's such a big beast if you like because it could actually if you used it on its SDS hammer setting and you were drilling you could actually shatter a brick or something like that so what they do is they put a switch on the back here which is a 70% switch it's there to reduce the power down to 70% and it gives you a soft start. So if I select it on 70%, that is our electronic speed control. We've got it set on 70 now and when it starts up, it's a much more gentle operation than if you go onto the big setting. So 70%. You can see straight away that there's a big difference there. So that's one thing that they've got on it. The other thing they've got on it is a kind of electronic chuck. It's not exactly an electronic chuck because what it does is it's a little sensor and it, if you're using the, the drill and it happens to snag, then there is a tendency for the body to want to turn rapidly like that. And what they have in here is like a little pendulum switch almost, if you like, and if you if you put a lot of sudden force on it that way, what it does is it switches off the motor straight away. And the only way to switch it back on again is to release your finger from the trigger and then you can start again, repress it and it will start again. So that's a good thing. That saves you having your blooming wrist broken or wrenched by that. I've had that a few times when I've been drilling into masonry and it's stuck. Now, if you don't want to drill into masonry if you want to do something else. This particular model, you have a little chuck. I think you can buy these afterwards. You don't need to buy it if you decide that you want it at some later date. There's nothing to stop you buying one of these later and adding it. But as the kit comes standard, you've got an exchangeable chuck there. So you can go putting larger auger bits in and things like that. Supposing you wanted to drill through an auger, uh, sorry, drill for a bit of timber something a bit larger you can just simply keyless chuck there and away you go so easy enough when you take it off on this particular chuck you can still release the uh, auger bit or drill bit or whatever you're using from the chuck which is nice because on some of them you have to leave it on the machine to actually release the bit so nice little addition it means that you've only got to take one drill up if you're working at height and you've got to do a bit of fixing, bit of drilling, bit of masonry, everything, and you want to just be able to swap over, stick that in your pocket and you can swap over at a second's notice back onto the SDS. Right, so 
we've now got that on its SDS setting so we can take something like an SDS bit we might as well take a slightly larger one here and that's the SDS bit and at the risk of teaching some of you to suck eggs there are some people even tradesmen I hesitate to say who don't know how an SDS chuck works. An SDS chuck works by sliding the bit in and out. Now that's a prime example of a dried up bit that isn't sliding very well at all. In the pack, they give you a bit of silicon. And the idea of the silicon is you stick a little bit of silicon in there, a little bit of lubrication, and then you stick your bit in. And when your bit goes in, it starts to lubricate it and allow it to slide backwards and forwards. Now that's very important because what's happening there, you can't really see it too well there, but what's going to happen there is when that hits a bit of brickwork, we'll show it out on site in a sec, that will go in and out at the rate of several thousand beats a minute. So what that does is that produces the hammering action on the drill bit end. And without that, you're killing the hammer action. So a lot of people think there's something wrong with their drill to go, oh, it's not hammering very well anymore. And uh, they, they send it away to repair. And of course, all it is, is that they've got a bit of a dry chuck there. Maybe the guy just squirts a bit of silicon in there and re returns it to him. And maybe he says it's been fixed and, uh, and none the wiser. Who knows? Who knows what happens in repair shops? But that's all it takes. A little bit of lubrication and you're away. So a very simple thing to do. The other thing I see a lot of guys do with SDS is they don't allow the drill to do the work. If you just don't exert too much pressure onto this thing, it, that bit will drive in and out quite happily on its own, hammering away and do the work for you. So with a very small amount of pressure on the back, you can just drive that drill bit in, even in hard concrete. I found this has gone through at a rate of knots. It's really, really fast. So there's no need to push hard. In fact, if you push hard, you negate the whole purpose of having the SDS bit in there anyway. So you're better off letting the drill do the work and uh, having a bit of an easier life and you'll find this a lot more effective. But I do see on site what you might think were experienced tradesmen pushing away on those SDS drills, thinking that, you know, that they're doing some good and uh, they're doing no good whatsoever. So on the dials here, we've got our hammer only, which is for chipping and all that kind of thing. And then if we turn around here, we've got rotary hammer. Oh yeah, they call that rotary stop, by the way, that position, because it stops the rotary action, fairly self-explanatory. So that is, the hammer action and if we want to put that other chuck on and we want to do drilling into timber or metal or something like that we don't want the hammer action we can just simply select the switch there and that allows us to drill as you might say uh, hss bits and things like that so that is basically what you've got you've got anti-vibration on the back here which is fantastic the whole of the back end rocks away there and you can see that it's taking up the some of them actually articulate here as well. They have a little mechanism there. This one tends to rely on this bit of rubber here, which is a very thick bit of rubber, to provide that bottom suspension. So rather than that being a mechanical connection there, that is a solid bit of heavy duty rubber, rather like a car tire, if you like. Maybe it's got a little bit of steel in it. It actually feels like it might have a bit of still running through the middle of it. But anyway, the cushioning is done by that. And by the top bellows here, there's a, a spring thing in there or something along those lines. But you can see that you've got plenty of anti-vibration. What have we got on the back that you might want to know about? We can release the battery simply by pressing that down, he says. Always difficult when you're trying to show people how to do things because obviously it looks a little bit cack-handed sometimes. So what have we got in the battery compartment with Bosch. They've got these cool pack batteries, which they reckon are good for twice the life of their other batteries for their predecessors. So what they do is they've got air vents through there. They put it onto the charger and a fan in the charger blows air straight through the battery. And in each of those cells, there's a space around the cells 
and a little bit of uh, something to take the heat away. So you've got air blowing straight through the battery out the other end, taking the heat away, which means that they can charge the battery a lot faster and without risk of damaging it. You've got electronic cell protection on this. So if the battery does start to overheat on the tool, it will cut out. And again, what you're gonna do is just leave it to rest and then press the trigger again and away it'll go. But it'll give you a little flashing light to tell you that something's up. Okay, so look, that's enough chat for me. The sun is shining. So let's get this tool outside and see what it's capable of. If we've got something like this, we want 100%. But if we're going for a softer brittle concrete like this, instead of going on, instead of going on 100%, we go on 70%. Now, if I do that on 100%, switch that to 100% and watch what happens. So there you are, I had a bit of fun with that. I knocked my neighbor's conservatory down. I don't know whether they'd be pleased about that or not, but I enjoyed it. And actually it does produce a fair amount of power, this thing, I mean, that three joules that you get from it, they do that because it's got this single impact energy, which instead of giving you lots of small blows on the SDS, it gives you fewer, but harder blows. And in order to achieve that, Bosch is saying that they can't use a brushless motor, that they have to use this four pole brushed motor in here. I don't know whether that's the case or not. They can tell you any story they like, but it works and that's the bottom line. It does produce a lot of energy and it's at least equal, if not better than a lot of corded machines I've used. So I'm very pleased with it. And the price is good because it's not a brushless motor, you can get really good prices. So if you want to check out prices, go to our sponsor, Toolstop, have a look at their prices. They get good service, get this to you very quickly and we're pleased to have them along as a sponsor. So I'm Roger Bisbee, thank you very much for watching and don't forget to come back soon, subscribe to us and if you like what we're doing, don't forget, give us a thumbs up but if you don't like what we're doing, give us a thumbs down because we always want your comments, we always want your criticism, even when it hurts. So if there's anything else you wanna see, comments below in the comments box, we love to see that because although we can test these tools, the people that are using them day in, day out, on site have got a longer term test on them and we want that feedback because that's the real value of these videos is building up that dialogue underneath getting a bit of a debate going so please get involved in that we're very very pleased to have your comments i'm roger bisbee i'll see you again soon <laughs>